Hello everyone! I am so full of gratitude to see you all here today. It certainly helps me to show up and see your smiling faces every week. So, who is here with us right now? Hey Quincy! Hi Ty! Hi Sunday! Hi Laurel! I hope you had a really good birthday Ruthie! It's good to see you Jude! Hi baby Ethan! You guys might say I have an attitude of gratitude. There are lots of different attitudes that we can have every single day, right? Sometimes I have five different attitudes before nine o'clock in the morning. But when you thank someone or when someone thanks you, it can turn your entire day around, don't you think? Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. So I'm curious, I kind of wonder who thinks that they can keep a serious frowning face if somebody's thanking them? Anyone? You need to be really good at frowning. Could you frown when someone gives you a thank you gift? What about if somebody did a dance of joy like in our story about David a week or so ago? So I'm going to challenge you guys to keep a serious frowny face as I Say a simple thank you, a classic thank you note. Remember, you're trying to see if you can keep your serious frowning face while I read you this thank you note. To my dearest friends, I would like to take this opportunity to express with the utmost sincerity and unequivocal seriousness, my deep and undying gratitude for the gift of your friendship. I believe there are few so lucky in this galaxy as I am to be acquainted with such fine human beings. And I do not take for granted that we are buddies. Your benevolence is without match and I consider it the highest honor to ascribe to you the designation of friend. Sincerely, your amiga, Mama Cash. Well, were you able to stay frowning during that super sincere reading of a thank you note? If so, that's really super impressive. I'm not sure I could have done it. It's hard to be grumpy, I think, when someone is saying thank you, especially if they mean it, right? So, Jesus often taught people by using stories that we call parables. He used examples um, from situations of people's lives to help them understand something really important, something that he really wanted them to remember. One day, Jesus told a story to his closest friends to explain what the kingdom of heaven is like. We can find this story in the book of Matthew in the Bible. If he told us that story today, in our world, it might go a little something like this. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses one through 15. There once was a man who owned a large vineyard. Here at Grape Escape Vineyards, we specialize in red, white, and green grapes. One bright autumn day, the man called in his manager to find out how his harvest was doing. It's doing great. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. We shall pick the grapes immediately before the beetles nibble them up. That's some good raisin in. 
The next morning, the vineyard owner rose while it was still dark and hurried to the center of town. He arrived at around 6 a.m. and there were people still standing around noshing on grape jelly muffins. Are you looking for work? Yes, indeed. How much do you pay? One hundred dollars for the day. Precisely perfect. Let us proceed. The owner led the workers back to his vineyard. Baskets, hats, don't squash the grapes. Oh, well, what happens if we do that? They might whine a little. The vineyard owner wanted to be sure that the beetles wouldn't ruin his precious grape harvest, so around three hours later at nine o'clock, he returned to the town center and found more people lined up for work. You come pick grapes for me. I'll pay you well. Good deal. Let's go. The workers were all picking as fast as they could, but there were still long rows to harvest. So the vineyard owner went back to the town center at 12 o'clock noon, three hours later, and there were still plenty of workers standing around. Come, help out in my vineyard. And after the new set of workers had worked for three hours, the vineyard owner returned to the town square again at three o'clock. Need some more grape pickers, you in? The blazing sun beat down as the vineyard owner added the new workers to his crew. One of them had hired at dawn, wiped sweat off his face as he sipped his water. Showing up for work in the afternoon. What a terrible work ethic. <sighs> the first workers returned to picking grapes, filling basket after basket. But even though it was still five o'clock, the vineyard owner returned to the town square where he still found plenty of people hanging around counting cockroaches and looking bored. Why have you been standing here all day? No one, like, hired us. I'll hire you. Come work in my vineyard. For the final hour of the workday, everybody pitched in. Whew. As the last baskets of grapes were brought up, the owner called to his manager. Just look at all these beautiful grapes, all freshly harvested. A great job, if I do say so. Pay the workers. Start with the ones I hired last of all. So the manager pulled out his cash box and lined up the workers. He started with the ones who only picked grapes for an hour. Here you go, $100. Like totally rad, man. At the other end of the line, the workers who began at dawn began doing some quick math. A hundred dollars for one hour of work. <laughs> That means we're about to get over a thousand dollars. The manager continued to hand out pay packets to the workers who started at three o'clock. One hundred dollars. And noon. One hundred dollars. And nine o'clock in the morning. One hundred dollars. Huh. Okay. By the time the workers who started at 6 a.m. reached the front of the line, they were getting a little bit um, worried. You're paying us what's fair for working all day, right? Yep, $100. What? Preposterous. The early morning workers stalked off to find the vineyard owner. You paid those hooligans who only worked an hour the same as us, even though we sweated all day picking your grapes. Just look at this crispy sunburn. Bread. Didn't you agree to $100 for the whole day? That is a technicality. Do you feel cheated because I gave so freely to the other workers? Don't I have a right to do what I want with my own money? But it's not fair. Take your money and go. I want to give the ones I hired last the same pay I gave you. The early workers glared and skulked away cash in hand. They had let the owner's generosity to someone else ruin their day. Jesus' story made it clear. God gives freely to everyone. Rather than focusing on what you don't have, adjust your attitude. Choose to look at what you do have. The truth is, you guys, none of us deserve anything. It's not ours in the first place. Every single thing that we have we have because God shared it with us. He is so generous to everyone, including you and me. So if you're feeling grumpy because someone has more than you, remember, you can always adjust your attitude. Find a way to be grateful, even when things don't seem 
fair. You guys, let's talk to God right now and ask him to help us do that. Dear God, thank you for being so generous toward us. Because you love us, you share with us. Help us to see that you are generous to everyone. If we feel grumpy because someone got more or because we feel like we deserve more, help us to adjust our attitude. We know we need to make the wise choice so help us choose gratitude. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus name. Amen. If you were one of the folks in our story who worked the longest like all day, how would it make you feel if you saw those other workers who worked for like a minute get the same pay as you? Be honest. I'll be honest with you. Adults struggle with this too, you guys. It's hard. It's not easy seeing other people receive something that we feel like we worked much harder for. But we can still be grateful. We can adjust our attitude. We can focus on what we do have instead of focusing on what we think is unfair. Adjust your attitude. You guys, that's our bottom line. Can you say it with me? Adjust your attitude. Check out this sign that we have hanging in our house. You guys, this is a choice we have. And there's a lot of power in having choices. Remember, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, even though we didn't deserve it. He showed love to all of us. When we think about that, it can help us to have a thankful attitude. Then we can live with joy and gratitude no matter what might be happening around us. And we can choose to adjust our attitude. Give this a try this week, you guys. If something doesn't seem um, like it's going the way you want it to or the way you hoped or you see somebody else getting something that you wanted, right? Make a change and have an attitude of gratitude. All right, you guys. Till next time, peace, love.